Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A hundred, a billion thank yous uh, for everybody contributing and working hard for making this week so great for the Dungeon Lounge. Uh, you are all wonderful and amazing, uh, especially my fellow streamers here. But uh, no less amazing are the people in the audience who have believed in us and given us all this support so far. And we appreciate all of you. Thank you so, so very much. It's been great, and I'm looking forward to making next week just as great as the first one. Uh, again, just a brief reminder, uh, any questions in the chat will be responded to at the end of our play session. And that's a reminder for the audience as well as my players here. I promise I won't chat with everyone. Duly noted. Okay. So, oh, certainly if you best. encounter technical tempting. issues, please let us know. Oh, yes. We are paying attention. Oh, yeah. We're not going to stop playing to just answer some questions. Okay. Uh, so, let's do a quick introduction of everyone again. Uh, I am Mal, the Dungeon Master. <laughs> And uh, this is not this campaign is not a uh, pre written adventure. This is entirely my brainchild, which I'm inflicting on my friends here. And then Elizabeth, you go. All right. Hi, my name is Elizabeth. I am a banshee and the admin of the Dungeon Lounge. Um, I am playing the character Wander in Mal's D and D game. She is a Warforged Druid. Uh, circle of the Shepherd, Circle of the Shepherds, uh, if that matters. Hey, I'm Sasha. I uh, train our troops, so to speak. Help with the admin when I'm not busy with that. I'm playing Helios Rex, uh, a Wood Elf who is basically the sniper of the group. Oh, me. Hi. Yes, uh, you. I'm, <laughs> I'm me. Uh, I am also Flora. Uh, I am playing uh, Nemia, who is a tiefling bard. Uh, I am also the treasurer here at the Dungeon Lounge. So please uh, stay away from the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that can be done. So to recap our first session, because uh, we didn't manage to get a recording because our uh, dark magic failed us. Oops. Still learning the dark magics of Twitch. Yes. Yes. Very dark magic. Very dark, much evil. Wow. <laughs> okay. So dark, many evils. Nemia, Wander, and Helios were recruited by various members of the Heroes of Procella, a group of much more experienced ad adventurers who were uh, rallied against the Mad Alchemist Knots. Uh, after uh, defeating him and driving him off into the wilds, uh, the entire party uh, you three included, followed the mad, or sorry, did I say mad alchemist? Mad artificer. Did. I had did. Mad artificer. Um, after following him for quite some time, you eventually found yourselves in a ruin, and there you bore witness to your mentors and their allies being brutally defeated uh, in particular, by a prismatic ray that Narvo Knots shot at your mentors and their friends. Uh, um, two of your mentors, uh, Sammy Jack and Rep the Evergranite, had their corpses taken 
taken for experimentation by the Mad Artificer. And Ewan of the Mind's Eye, the rude and uh, very dismissive warlock of the group, who didn't have much to do with you guys at all, uh, was petrified and was still able to communicate to you with his telepathic powers. Uh, he encouraged you to... Uh, he encouraged you to... Uh... Sorry, I lost my place. To journey after the Mad Artifice and at the very least, if you can't stop him, warn whoever is on the other side of the portal he exited through that the Mar Mad Artificer is about, and he's up to no good. However, unknown to all of you, uh, when you activated the Archway portal to follow him, uh, Helios accidentally manipulated the wrong dial, and so you were sent through time and space to another unknown plane in completely the wrong direction of where you were supposed to go. Not that we know that. Nope. So for liability purposes, what you're saying is, is that this is all Helios's fault. Hey, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody corrected him. <sighs> it's hard being an elf. <laughs> so the first person through the portal was Wandered, followed by Helios, and then finally Nemia. Wander! Hello. I am Wander. Yeah. Well, there you are. <laughs> You are sent through a bright light and a very sort of warm, weightless feeling as you travel through the portal. When you finally feel ground again, it is softer, slightly, and you feel your feet slip as you get your bearings and regain your balance after the experience of going through the portal. You realize it is much warmer, and the air is humid and heavy. And as you begin to take in visual information, as the glow fades from your eyes, you see that the ruins are now covered in an entirely different kind of planet life. Uh, brightly colored blossoms of exotic flowers sprout from various vines, and the mountainous terrain has been replaced with an expansive jungle. Ooh. The softness of the ground that you were feeling was a fine layer of white sand, which seems to cover the tiles of the ruin. And the Song of exotic birds comes to your ears. The entire place throbs with life, and even as your druidic senses come fully focus, it seems as though the very ground beneath you is pulsing with a life of its own. You barely have time to step aside as all of a sudden Helios materializes just behind you. Bumping into your back. And then a moment later, Nemia finally appears. Uh, oh. Getting a little feedback that apparently we're visually a little choppy. Uh, yeah, Sasha. Unfor yeah, unfortunately, it seems to be specifically you too, um, which is unfortunately how I'm receiving your data. So I don't know if there's much I can do about that, unfortunately. Yeah, it might be mm, because... some of the sorcery going awry here. Yeah. So 
we'll, uh, we'll, we'll muddle our way through. At least the audio is coming through clearly. So that's the, I think that's a little more, like I certainly want, you know, we want to be able to interact as we can, but um, as long as we have the audio, oh, Flora did just comportiate it already. <laughs> it, she's back. <laughs> so I think we may just oh, have okay. to deal Thanks, with it. Yeah. Scoporiation today. My my grasp on this plane is tenuous at best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but well, after the uh, challenges of this week, next week I should have a lot more time to uh, focus my magical energies and hopefully make everything better. Sounds good. Right. <laughs> I, I've gone back to my home planet. Yeah. <laughs> Your people need you. <laughs> Be free, Flora. Be free. So after all that, do, do I need to start my intro over? Did you absorb all oh, that? Oh, no, no. I absorbed it. Yeah. We are in okay. a jungle. Yep, I got it. Biosphere. Intro absorbed. We're in a beautiful jungle biosphere, yes. Except yes. for the sand on the, I guess, the platform that we arrived on from the Stargate. I'm calling it a Stargate until I get another name. I hate sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. So, there your characters are. Oh, okay. Yay. And well, sign of the bad uh, artificer. Uh, uh, taking a look around, you don't see any telltale trails. He escaped with the two doom knights that were carrying the bodies of your former mentors. Yeah. But uh, they don't, doesn't appear to be any tracks in the sand. At least nothing person-shaped or suppose humanoid footsteps. Oh. Um... So you say well, there's no sign um, of tracks or anything. Looking back at the device, is it set in the same way? Like, I guess it's, we don't, we can't necessarily go back the way we came. Like, I'm guessing the portal shut down again. If you want to bring up the image of the portal again. Sure. Uh, the, the portal is shut down. But as you're looking at the uh, right. archway mechanism itself. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, as you're looking at the archway mechanism itself, the right hand dial is set to the um, single vertical line with the two horizontal ones. So 12 o'clock. And the leftmost dial the leftmost dial is missing entirely. Oh, oh no. Oh, the, the dial is gone? Oh. The dial is gone. Well, that's no good. So we, we, we can't operate this one then. Uh, well, that's certainly not the same as it was before we went through it. Uh, is there a space where it should be? Or is it just... There is a space, and you can even see the peg of stone on which it rested. But the dial itself is gone. Oh, no. Okay, so we probably just have to find it then. Well, before we do anything, mm -hmm. um, dial or otherwise... Maybe we should try and find some civilization. I agree with that plan. Yeah. There might uh, be someone who can help us out. What time of day is it right now? Uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, it's difficult to see the sun through all the jungle foliage. Mm. But it's certainly very bright out. Seems to be around noon. Maybe a little later in the day than it was when you entered the portal. Because you guys nap took an overnight nap and then stepped through right oh right yes right naps are important um i mm -hmm. know you said there is no evidence of like seeing the artificer or anybody but is there any evidence of like 
any pathways that go from here through the jungle, like a, a road or just a walkway or? Uh, you see definitely there's different, as you take a look around, there are different animal tracks and uh, animal pathways le leading away from the ruin. Not a lot of signs of human life until you come across a stone bird. Oh, stone bird. It's oh. a stone sculpture of some kind of exotic, uh, high-crested bird lying on the ground, exquisitely crafted to absolute lifelike detail. Only, for some reason, there's a huge chunk of its wing wing missing as if something took a bite out of it. Yeah. Wander. Interesting. Yeah. Do you recognize this kind of bird? You know you know about animals and stuff, right? Uh, is there an animal handling check I can make or some sort of knowledge check, Mel? Uh, yeah, you can roll a nature check. Alrighty. Uh okay. Uh, 22. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. I rolled a 19. Uh, yeah, you've heard of this, you've heard of this sort of thing before. Uh, that's not a lifelike statue, that's a petrified oh. bird that something has oh. tried to devour. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you, it gives you the distinct impression that this might be the hunting ground of a basilisk. Oh. So I will turn to Nemia and Helios. This isn't a carved statue. This is a bird that has been likely turned to stone. We may be in the territory of a basilisk. Oh. Um, oh, well, shoot. We'd better be careful then. Yeah. Yeah. Keep um, an eye out. Yeah. Maybe we should... Uh... See if we can find some kind of settlement or something. Get our bearings. Um, I if it's all right, Mal. Uh, maybe can I try another check to see if I can summon maybe some local wildlife? Like maybe they're avoiding this area because of the basilisk, but maybe it'll be like, hey, point us to the humans or the creatures. I mean, and I I shouldn't maybe assume I don't we don't even know where we are. We, humans may not be at the settlement. It could be something completely different, but. Uh, you can definitely hear uh, animals around in the distance. Probably just leaving the basilisk's territory will be enough to get you clear okay, okay. to uh, actually speak to one face-to-face. -face. Okay, sounds good. Great. I'm happy so to... So you start... Go ahead. Just to the party, happy to move on if, if when we can? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's go. Let's get moving. We, sh we shouldn't linger if there's a basilisk in the area. Okay. So you go moving through the underbrush, uh, pushing through to some of the uh, animal trails, streaming away from the uh, ruins. When all of a sudden. All of a sudden, out of the undergrowth stops a large, many legged lizard. The basilisk? Perhaps. Mm. Is it uh, in front of your party? Me. Uh, it always me. It always me. It yeah. drew it. A makeshift tank. Yeah. <laughs> This is a good time to maybe confirm that should we we didn't declare our spells because we were going to talk about it in character. Oh yeah, well, we can confirm our spells. Uh, what spells do you have for the day? Um, I was planning to keep Thunder Wave and Entangle because those two were great. 
um, and then yeah. Fairy Fire and Detect Magic for my first levels. And then for my second ones, I was thinking of still keeping up uh, the Flaming Spear and Dark Vision. Um, I'm basically keeping all my same spells because I yeah. don't really have anything to swap to. Uh, so I've got Dissonant with Sleep, Healing Touch, Heroism uh, for level one, and Suggestion and Silence for level two. Okay. Uh, also, Lemia, don't forget you also have your hellish rebuke for being a tiefling. Oh, I do. I even have that written down. That's a second level spell, right? Yes. I no, it's a first level spell, but you cast it oh, as if it was a second level spell oh, when you use it like that. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I'm going to keep what I have for now, for today. That's good. Okay. So the Basilisk steps out of the underbrush in front of Wander, and immediately its glowing blue eyes lock with hers. Uh, Wander, are you going to try to avert your gaze? Yeah, I don't want to be bas I don't want to be turned to stone today, thank you. All right. Wait, can I be turned to stone? Let me check that. I'm pretty sure you Question. can. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry. There's nothing here that's like because I know that there's some things like I know I have constructed resilience, but I think that's specifically poisons that okay. I'm resistant to. So okay. I'll get everybody's initiative right now. Okay. But uh, at the moment, you are all surprised because the basilisk legit rolled a twenty on that stealth check. Ooh. Seventeen. Two. 14. 10. I was super surprised. Ah, a basilisk. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing you turn away, it immediately strikes. Ow. Uh, coming at you while you're not looking and... Uh, biting deep into one of your calves Ow. as it charges forward. I need those. They let me walk. Uh, I need <laughs> does uh, poison damage do anything different to uh, Warfork? Uh, let me check. You were just saying something about poison resisting. I, I I do. Oh, sorry. I have advantage on saving throws. Uh, yeah. But no special resistance to poison type damage, right? You have advantage on saving throws against being poisoned, and you have resistance to poison damage. Okay, so it's blocked. Okay. So you take 11 piercing and 3 poison damage as it bites deep into your calf. So, sorry, 11 piercing and 3 poison, so 14 damage in total. Yep. Correct? Sorry, yes? Yes, yes correct. Okay. So I'm almost going to need a nap. <laughs> we just All got right. here, we're already not ready for a nap. <laughs> At least I am. All right, so at the top of the second round, uh, the Basilisk is threatening Wander, and it is Helios that is up first, followed by Nemia. Uh, since it's facing Wander, not me, would it be possible to uh, poss like, um, shoot an arrow at like the back of its head? What's your speed? 35? Yeah, you should be able to circle around it and shoot it from behind. It's still going to be aware of you. So it's not going to get you a special advantage, but it'll at least keep you out of the range of its gaze. Okay. Uh, so... It's a d20, right? Oh, uh -huh. 
Yes, it is very oh. much a d20. Uh, do I get... I, d I don't get my dexterity bonus, right? For shooting, absolutely. You get your okay. proficiency bonus and your dexterity bonus. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oof. Had oh, 15, sorry. Yes, that's a hit. Yes. All right. So roll your um, damage. Please remember to add your uh, dexterity bonus to your damage as well. Nine. Go ahead. Nine. Okay, damage. Okay. You nail it in the back of the head or somewhere in the back of its neck head area. It's really sort of stubby and hard to tell. Um, with one of your arrows, and the thing hisses in surprise. And uh, many of them wander. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, for a free action, I'm going to give a bardic die to wander. Thank you. To use at your discretion. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to try and put it to sleep. We'll try to put it to sleep, huh? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good plan. All right. Uh, I don't think I have to roll spot. for that. Uh, I think you have to roll to see how much HP. Oh, right. I have to roll the HP, HP pool. Right. Yes. I'll remember these spells uh, someday. <laughs> you know, the, so the system is new to all of us, relatively speaking, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. 19. Uh, yes, it definitely has more HP. Oh. Oh. All right. Aww. <laughs> well, it doesn't go to sleep then. It doesn't go to sleep. But at least you gave away your bardic inspiration. Yeah, uh, I, did, wander... I did give away a die. So wanders up and then the basilisk. Okay. Um, sorry, I just noticed that we lost Sasha. Oh. oh no. Oh, Sasha has now returned to her home oh. planet. <laughs> oh, apparently my people needed me. Uh, I don't know what to say to that. You'll need to log back in to the, to the link that I gave you. Yes. Uh, You'll okay. need to access the like magic you, link again. You, yeah, you, yeah. you dropped, you completely yes. dropped from that. Oh. Channel the arcade link. <laughs> yes. yes yeah. In the meantime. I'm on the plus side, <laughs> yeah. on the plus side it looks like I'm more, or I'm slightly less choppy than I was before, so that's good. Almost there. Oh, where'd it, where'd it go? You said that it's uh, I'm, I'm up. There we go. No, that one. Yep. Uh, uh, entangle. Okay, I'm back. Are you gonna entangle it? Yep. I uh, should be let me back. Just, I, let me just give you the information for that, and then I'll get uh, Sasha looked after. Uh, a creature in the area when you cast a spe the, the spell must succeed um, a strength saving throw or be restrained. And they have to save against a 14. Okie dokie. Hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. There we go. That's okay. I, oh, sorry, I, I, I suspect your connection to the dark magic blipped just long enough that it considered you out of the room. Uh, you briefly teleported out of the dungeon. Whoops. Um, it's a dexterity save, right? Uh, strength. Strength? Okay. Uh, the vines attempts to entangle the basilisk, but it's able to rip itself free. Can I also easily. back away from it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I want to be away from it. Okay, so the basilisk is currently facing... Uh... Do you put Nemia between you and the basilisk? No. So you're going to stay in front of Nemia? Well, I'm trying to back away from it because I just don't want to get it... To... I don't want it to reach out and bite you, me again. <laughs> are you averting your gaze? Yes. Okay.
Being unrestrained by the vines, it comes towards you again. Oh, no. Uh, Does that same hit again? I'm down. Would a 15 hit you? Yeah, it will. Wait. 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 I I have a dice for this now this time. I'm going to use the reaction and spend one of my bardic die uh, to do cutting words. Um, okay. So a creature I could see within 60 feet of me uh, when they make mm -hmm. an attack roll or whatever, I could use my reaction to spend a die. And uh, rolling a bardic die, uh, subtract the number rolled from this creature's roll. Go for it. All right. With my sharp cutting wit, I am rolling a die. You stupid lizard. <laughs> oh no. I got oh, a no. one. Oh. It has a 14 still hit you, Doctor. It ties me. It ties? Okay, so it does still hit. So, yes, then it does. You still lousy hit. lizard. Apparently, despite, it does not care. Uh, despite your ally uh, shouting and screaming at the lizard, uh, the basilisk doesn't, is somewhat unperturbed. Uh, you're going to take so sorry. eight piercing and two poison. I'm dead. Or I'm a, I'm a negative one. You're a negative one? No, you're at zero. You can't go into negative. Then I'm at zero. Nap time. All right. It viciously attacks your uh, calves again, despite the fact that you're not made of meat. Yeah, you think it would go for someone else. Your ally falls to the ground. Avenge me. Well, not that sound. <laughs> no. Probably more of an electronic. Wonder. Probably the sound of a computer shutting down. <laughs> <laughs> so we go Helios of Anemia. Uh, I'm going to fire another arrow at its head. All right. Remember you have your arcane archer powers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Use the I one will where do it takes damage if it moves. Yeah, I will do the um, grasping arrow. Mm -hmm. So first, that's a, a regular arrow roll. Um, fifteen. Uh, yeah, that hits him. Okay, a uh, regular damage roll. For uh, six. Um, and then for the. Add your bonuses if you have any. Yeah, that, that was with bonuses. Okay. And then uh, Grasping Arrow is. Uh... Uh, first, it takes an extra 2d6 poison damage. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, for eight poison damage. And then 2d6 for slashing damage. Uh, okay, if on it, each if turn. It tries to move. Okay, yep. So. Yep. Ah, that's something I didn't realize for last time. It only occurs the first time it moves each turn. Oh. <laughs> So you guys had an easy time tonight. That's okay. That was that was not an easy, easy time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you nail the uh, basilisk once again. The cutting poisonous brambles sprouting from where you're struck, wrapping around the creature as it howls in pain. Uh, then we're back to Nemia. And then I'm trying again. Okay. Um, I'm trying to decide if I should try and heal Wander, or if I should try and make the Basilisk go away. Make the Basilisk go away, and then we can heal Wander. Ooh. You know it has more than that... 19 health. That's true. Okay. Um, Minus whatever Sasha did. 
sorry, Helios did. It's true. Uh, okay, I'm going to use suggestion. Okay. Uh, so I get to suggest a course of activity to it, uh, which is limited to a sentence or two, uh, to magically influence a creature that I can see and that can hear and, oh, would it understand me? It didn't understand me, but I'm lying on the ground. Would, would a basilisk understand what I'm saying? How much do you know about basilisks? Um, it's a creature. Can I roll to know what I know about basilisks? Yeah, and you can make the same na nature check that, uh, that Wander made. Okay, so if I don't have nature as a skill, it's a d10, right? d20. Uh, no, you just don't add your proficiency bonus. Oh, I just don't add my proficiency bonus, okay. Yeah, otherwise it's the same d20 roll at your intelligence monitor. I got a 19! Uh, from what you've heard about basilisks, they're pretty much, in all other ways, dumb beasts. Although, if you raise one from a hatchling, it can be trained to obey commands. Okay, so it probably won't understand me telling it something. Unless it escaped exactly. from a trainer. No. Okay, I do have a backup plan in Dissonant Whispers, which I can make it move away. Yes, you can. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'm going to use Dissonant Whispers instead. Uh, and it has to make a wisdom saving throw at 13. I'm going to hope a basilisk isn't very wise. Uh, it is, in fact, not very wise. So okay, you great. get full damage, and then Helios, if you don't mind rolling the slashing damage for your grasping arrow. So it takes... It takes nine psychic damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it has to move as far away from me as it can, uh, that its speed allows. Okay. And then Helios? Did we lose Sasha? Oh, hi, sorry. Uh, we got five. Five for the slashing damage? Okay. Yeah. So it's still on its feet. Uh, after being driven into some kind of frenzy by unseen voices, as it turns and scrambles away, the vines cutting deeply into its flesh. Although now it's pretty much pointed straight at uh, Helios. Oops. Instantly turn away. <laughs> All right, so that's it for Nemia's uh, turn. Self, um, between wherever, whatever direction it's run off of, and Wander. Okay. Uh, Wander, you need to make a death save. Yay. So you roll oh, a no. d20, and you're trying to get 11 or higher. Okay, and do she I has get any bonuses? She has a bardic die. Can she roll the bardic die for this? Uh, unfortunately, she can't. No. Oh. Do I I'm get sorry. any applied bonuses from, like, Constitution or anything like that? Not at all, but if you roll a 20, you get 1 HP and you're back on your feet. I rolled a 13. Well, you've passed one. Yay. So, uh, keep track. I'll keep track of that for you, actually. No, I, yeah, I have, I got, I've got it. Boop. Because if you fail three... I die. Death saves before you pass three, you die. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So the basilisk is now pointed directly at Helios. Hey, Helios, do you want to avert your gaze? Absolutely. All right. So you avert your gaze, but uh, it's definitely within range to come and bite you. Uh, can I? put some distance between us? Uh, that would have been something that you had to do on your last turn. Oh. Okay. Well, at least I turn away then. Yep. Uh, okay. Does a 14 hit you? Uh, 
Uh, it's exactly my armor class. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around, I hear. Yes, that is, <laughs> yeah. that is also me. Yeah. We're having some deja vu Okay, here. so you're taking eight piercing damage and then four poison damage as it sinks its claws into your, the flesh Ooh. of your thigh. Seriously, it's being very consistent Ouch. with its damage output. Ouch. Yeah, for some reason I was rolling really high against you. You're rolling really high against Sasha, too, so apparently you just hate all of us. <laughs> I don't hate, hate all of out. you. <laughs> Listen, I think that implies you hate some of us. Yeah. The challenge rating of this monster might technically be a little high for this party, but I'm you, sure you, you got what? This. So the, the, literally the book is like, don't put this against your little, the, our current level party. You're like, it's fine. They're fine. It, it, it fine. is fine. You guys are okay, I fine. believe in us. <laughs> I just had to do I a death save. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's Helios what, did next. You die? Well, and we're finding out. <laughs> Helios next and then Nemia. Now, Helios, because you're trying not to meet the Basilisk's gaze, you technically mm -hmm. are blind fighting it this turn. Oh. Uh... Well, I guess since I'm still close to it, can I, like, try to slash it with my short sword? Yep, but you'd be, uh, fighting as though you can't see it. So, does that take away from my dice? Yes. Yeah, I believe you're rolling at a disadvantage. But I will check oh. to make sure. Okay. Why are there so many appendices? What is reason? Of... Yeah. <laughs> I'm dreading the day that we have to eventually look up the grappling rules because the grappling rules of any system are long and convoluted. <laughs> uh, this one's relatively simple. But... Oh, good. Yeah, so you have a disadvantage. So you have to roll a d20 twice and use a lower roll. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my lower roll is 19. Wow. Did you roll a 19 or a 20? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I wish I could show you guys. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. So, yeah, you draw your short sword and without looking, stab straight down into the uh, basilisk's flesh for all your damage. Sweet. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Uh, do I add my dexterity for damage? Depends on the weapon. Uh, yeah, it's a finesse weapon, isn't it? So, yes. All right. Uh, so that'll be... 12. Oh! Wow. Yeah, it is not a happy basilisk. Uh, Nemia, you're up <laughs> and then wander again. Wow. Uh, okay, I guess I'm gonna try and heal Wander. Since, uh, the Basilisk is currently occupied with, uh, Helios. Uh, so... Wait, the spell... Does, does Wander count as a construct? That's a good question, Wander? Um... I'm not... In Entirely sure. I think I count as a person. Uh, yeah, if it doesn't say in your um, species description there that uh, you're let me, counted sorry. as a construct, so then you can be healed. It says it's a. Uh, I am technically a humanoid construct, but I don't think I have rules like a humanoid construct. If that makes any sense, like I think it's one of those things that. There's an easy way to do. Can you magically heal a orphan? Can be healed. Yes. Okay. Good. So by your call, I will use healing. Okay. All right. Three. 
So oh, you plus my, have... Sorry, six. Six. Because you get plus six. my casting modifier. So you heal right. six. So wipe the slate clean with regards to your death saves. You have right. six HP wander, and you're lying on the ground. Hey. <laughs> Get up, Wander. The window, the window, the the windows. Ninety eight sound plays as my systems boot up. (laughs) Sure, why not? You're not allowed to die just yet. (laughs) I don't want to die. We just started this adventure. I know. So does a fourteen hit you, uh, Helios? Oh well, Uh, first of all, are are you still averting your gaze? Oh yeah, of course. Alright. And a 14 hits you? Yeah, unfortunately. Alright, so you're taking uh, 10 piercing and 3 poison as the basilisk continues to savage you now that it's super pissed off. Uh, 2 poison, you said? 3 poison. Oh, 3 poison. 10 piercing, 3 poison, 13 damage in total. Uh, okay. You're still alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, All I'm right. fine. I, I mean, I'm hurting, but I'm fine. <laughs> well, it's your turn again. And then Demia after you. More slashy slashy. All right, you're still rolling with disadvantage. Okay. Oh. Ouch. Oh. What did you roll? W- one, so I, <laughs> I hit uh, air. <laughs> that's a critical fail, yeah. right? Critical failure. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not using critical failures, but it definitely fails. So you try stabbing at it again, but now it's wise to your tricks. And uh, you hit nothing but air as it dodges out of the way of your seeking sword. Many of them wander. I'm going to, I've got one more spell left. Should I give you another heal or should I try and attack it? How how hurt does the basilisk look? Yeah. It's bleeding from a half dozen places and in general, it does not look happy. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do another dissonant whisper. Okay. So it has to make a third. Wisdom save. Uh, it will pass oh. that. Okay, so I still dead. get to. Uh... Yeah, it takes half damage, so. Uh, I guess I should just roll 3d3. Instead of 3D3. Uh, no, roll regular damage and then cut it in half. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's I guess technically how you're supposed to. Oh wow! Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, round up or down? Uh, up, let's say. Uh, then six. I got an eleven. Six. Yeah. All right. With a ear piercing shriek, it uh, uh, writhes in place for a while before falling down onto its side, dead. Hooray! Hooray! Good job. <laughs> Nemia will crouch down over Wander and uh, be like, Hey, Wander, are you, uh, you feeling okay? That was... I think the word is uncomfortable. Mm. Do you think you can stand up? Or like... maybe we should uh, all just have a sit for a few minutes? I think we should all rest. I'm feeling kind of ouchy right now. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. There's... Deep, vicious bites and wanders, wandered Helios's eyes and calves, as well as there's that little bit of poison that's making you feel a tiny bit woozy. Oh no. Yeah. 
Well, probably right. not so much. Well, then let's much. have. <laughs> yes. Let's have a short rest. All right. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to use while we're having our short rest. Uh, if people are spending their hit dice, uh, you can get uh, one extra d6. Okay. Oh. As I uh, you know, pull out my pan flute and play a, a little little tune for you. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Sasha again. Oh no. <laughs> we're oh. we're having some Technicolor something's I'm, happening. Where did I go? And, and Sasha's back, gone so. again. <laughs> and Sasha's back. So. Oh. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely have to try that other bulky stream spell. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Please. Yeah. Okay. This one. Keeps yeah, we'll have to consult out. the libraries for additional multi-stream spells. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, this is an additional yeah, like D6. Hey, babe, on... when you pry it from my cold dead hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get an additional D6 of. Uh, hit die for your rest. All right, so I'm going to roll one of my hit die. Same for Sasha. And it's your and it's your constitution uh gets added to it, right? Well? Yep. Yep. That is correct. Please do. Okay, so I get a six from uh, from that, and then sorry, then a one d six. From next d six. Yep, from the song of healing. Oh, so I got a yes. six off that. So thank you very much. Oh, nice. Uh, Nemia. So that's nice. a total of twelve hit points back for um, Wander. So not not back at full health, but definitely healthier. Healing power. So you guys are literally at the edge of the ruins. You haven't even properly entered the jungle yet, and you've <laughs> already had this encounter with a deadly creature. Yeah, definitely not liking this realm. Bleeding we are. and tired. Yeah. Catching your breath when all of a sudden a friendly conversational voice from out of the jungle says, well, I hope you all are having a nice little relaxation after that. I do appreciate you distracting the creature for me. As out of the trees comes a tall uh, male figure with, who's just wearing a black vest and a pair of breeches and boots otherwise going bare-chested. His skin is a little bit darker than what you're used to. And he has a satchel and a large, impressive-looking bow strapped across his back. Uh, his face is kind of broad, and his nose is a little flatter than what you'd expect on a human. And, but his key feature are the pair of black cat ears poking <laughs> out of his tousle of dark hair. Kind of cat man. Kitty. <laughs> uh, uh, it was our pleasure, sir. Well, I hope you're uh, glad that you survived. Basilisk is not anything to really take lightly. Well, it was certainly nice of you to uh, stand there and watch and uh, not help us at all. Thanks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want to insult your efforts by uh, poking in uninvited. I prefer to survive than be oh, Feel free to... Over. Feel free to barge in uninvited when uh, you know one of my friends is dying on the ground, but to each their own. Yeah. Uh, who are who are you, by the way? 
Ah, my name's Prios. Well, hello, Prios. He takes out a hunting knife and starts gutting the basilisk on the ground. Yeah, well, I guess if uh, if you need a meal for for a family, then this would do it. Uh, no. Actually, there's an organ in here that secretes an oil, which is an antidote to the petrification. Oh. I don't suppose I could uh, try winning over your tiefling friend by uh, offering you all a place to rest for the night and a free meal, though. That would go a long way into uh, winning me over, yes. How sincere We're, does uh... this guy seem? I don't know. Sorry? How sincere does this guy seem? Uh, make an insight check. Cool. We all make an insight check? Uh, Wander seems to be the most suspicious, That's but if she fails, three. I'll let you take a shot. Yeah. She did not fail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he's definitely amused at you two in general. Hmm. Or you three in general. Um, although his offer is sincere, that he seems to genuinely want to win you over. All right. Happy to accept some help. And if Be my nice friend to uh, have a place to uh, get our bearings without getting worried about being attacked again. Yeah, I was a little surprised hearing the archway activate again. There should Does be it a often? second dial. Yes, there should be. He sounds a, more than a little bitter at that. I'm sensing this is a long-running problem. Well, my uh, scout unit and I have been stranded on this plane for almost a month now because we can't seem to find the dial nor have any other way of activating the archway nor of our commanding officers seem fit to come find us. So you are not, this is not your home either. You came through this g gate as well. That is correct. Where are you from? He takes something slimy and I'm pleasant looking out of the uh, out of the basilisk's innards and plops it into his satchel. Uh, well, I could give you the name of the plane that I'm from, but would you necessarily know it? Wait, plane? This... Plane, yes. Sorry. We are not familiar with the gate that we traveled through before we traveled. I had hoped that we were still in potentially in our home domain, just in another location. No, this is very much a different place. Oh. Uh, as far as I'm a not. 100% familiar with the science, but as far as we can tell, that they're entirely disconnected except through the archways. Oh. And we are the last travelers you've seen. There's been no other indication of the gate activation before we arrived. Perhaps maybe eight hours before. 
No, no. Posing figure, perhaps? Oh, no. Believe me, I've been... Me or one of my uh, scouts have been keeping an eye on the archway for weeks. For any change, any contact whatsoever. And unfortunately, we have not been fortunate in that regard. Seems to me our best chances of both of us getting back to where we came from is to search for the other uh, gate dial. Well, before we embark on uh, some kind of uh, multilateral cooperative action here, perhaps maybe you ought to rest and uh, we can have our healer take a look at some of those wounds. Yes, please. It's not far. The way then. So Prios leads you through the jungle on mostly game trails, uh, natural pathways made for animals as they move through the underbrush. You don't see any other basilisks, but there are a wide variety of animals once you get away from the uh, once you get away from the uh, basilisk hunting ground. Can I? I, I it's just more for Wander's peace of mind. W- Wander saw a little bit of the other side today and just wants to have a bird to keep her company. Just you know, support bird. Support bird. Emotional support bird. I would like to call a bird over for some emotional support. Even though I am a Warforged, I, I I think Wander would appreciate it. You whistle at what you think is a bird and begin casting your Speak with Animals spell. Um, is it a spell? I just know I have it on, on my character permanently. Speech. It's just called Speech of the Woods. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Like I know there is I know there is a distinct spell for it, but I think it's different as uh, based on my class. Okay. I'm just looking at the particular fall creature. Let's see if it's technically an animal. Purposes of that ability. It, I think the it's idea is that I can talk to them, but they don't necessarily have to listen. Like I don't compel them in any manner. It's just a back and forth conversation like I would have with any NPC. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Oh, is it specifically a Circle of Shepherd ability? Yeah, it's a Circle of Shepherd, yeah. Not even looking in the right book. Great, all this wonderful book flipping. I just don't want to have a situation where I'm like, oh, you can totally talk to this thing and have somebody in the chat going... I'm actually. <laughs> I'll actually now. Oh, we got raided. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Oh, I appear That's to be disappearing to my home planet again. That's okay. Your people need you. Yeah. We'll welcome you back when you return. Hello, Stone. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I appear to be disappearing. <laughs> It'll fix it. Right, we're still happens. figuring out the dark magics of Twitch for those of you who are just joining us. We may have a so, we may have a few technical problems. Wander yes. uh, whistles from one of the birds flying through the canopy, and you're actually surprised to see that uh, what you actually attract the attention of lands on a trunk high above you and kind of looks at you curiously appears to be a small feathered lizard about two feet long with a pair of brightly colored wings. I mean, not exactly what I was aiming for, but, you know, feathered friend is feathered friend, so I will Mm -hmm. check in, see if it wants to come hang out on my shoulder or on my hand. It's a bird if you want it to be. 
<laughs> if I if I wish hard enough, maybe it will be a bird. <laughs> uh, sure, make me Your a hopes and dreams. Sorry, uh, what check, please? Persuasion check. Okay. Oops. Am I actually good at persuasion? I forgot. Oh no. <laughs> That's actually, oh. that's actually the one thing I'm a negative at. Okay. <laughs> oh, so I did oh. not roll a one, but with my negatives, it is now a one. So this thing must hate me, <laughs> oh. and I am very, very sorry. Um, It's just like, machine thing, awful, yeah. Peck. It, it's more that it's like, doesn't quite trust you. And you, in fact, get a very warm sense of uh, its curiosity and how you're this strange, unique thing that it's never felt before. And that's when you realize that it's giving off of some kind of empathic channel to you, Ooh. where you're actually feeling its emotions. Oh. And then that's pretty cool. Yeah. But then you realize that you're starting to fall a little bit behind your group, and you hurry to catch up. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, bird. Sorry, maybe bird. Feathered friend. Bird. Bird. Lizard. Dragon thing. <laughs> dinosaur. But again, I don't think Wander would have a concept of dinosaur. So. So you get led through the trees, and eventually it opens up into a small clearing built into the side of the hill. And you can see down the hill a ways and over the trees to the ocean below, where there are several other islands right nearby. Uh, oh, that's the exciting. encampment itself is about half a dozen huts. Uh, made of the local flora, just the local trees. Uh, some of them are hut packed down and made into these little semi log cabin -y huts. Uh, quite a few tents scattered about. A couple big cook fires where you can smell the smells of something delicious cooking. And curiously, Two bamboo cages uh, in the center of it all, where you can see two humanoid figures are being kept captive. But also a great deal of people, uh, mostly humans or the strange cat people like Prios, uh, wandering around doing whatever business it is that they're doing. Everything seems to have that feel of a military encampment. This is. Uh, I can appreciate this. I mean, Wander has like vague memories of a place like this or something neighboring this. I'm thinking back from before she awakened as a druid. So, in her more uh -huh. earlier days as an automaton. So, there's, yeah. there's, there's a familiarity, a bit of a nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Like almost sort of a deja vu, a nostalgia you can't quite place kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brios is just kind of shrugs and is like, it's not much, but it's home for now. Why, uh, who's that in those cages down there? Ah, natives that attacked us. We've been trying to interrogate them, but they're stubborn and I can't quite bring myself to, uh, order anything drastic. Why not release them? Because we're hoping that they come around. Why will they think change keeping their them mind in a cage is going to make them come around? Well, you know, they presumably want to go back to their families at some point. But like I said, they're stubborn. Hmm. 
Mm. Anyway, as he goes leading you into the camp, uh, some of the other soldiers, although none of them are in anything approaching a regular military uniform, are all giving him nods and salutes. You in charge here? Uh, yep. That'd be me, the commander. Hmm. Although, you know, I try to keep things loose. A scouting unit has to be able to re rely on individual soldiers much more than a uh, attack brigade or anything like that. Uh, you guys haven't, uh, have you guys been looking for the, uh, missing, um, dial for the gate yet? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we think it's on one of the other islands, but, uh, Island? it's taking time to construct boats. And, well, this is an island. A map. Oh, yes. Here, come on. I'll show you my command tent. We have a map, or at least something approaching a map. So we lead you into one of the huts. Where in the center of the hut on a makeshift wooden table has been laid out a series of maps. Uh, weighed down at the edges with stones and scabbards and other such objects. Yep. Yeah. And he shows you a map of the island, as well as a map of this archipelago of seven different islands, as well as a few other stones poking out of the sea. A point, like, gestures at the map of the island and is like, here's the ruin. Here's our encampment. Here's the beach. All of that is fine. This stays the same. He then unrolls another map, lays it down next to the map of the archipelago, and while they have the same shapes of islands, their configuration is very different. This is the archipelago from a week ago, and this is the archipelago as of two nights ago. They're moving? The islands here move. Under what They mechanism? rearrange. I wish you could tell me. Like I said. You can see how that would make things difficult. This is a very different place. And these things rearrange themselves. As far as we can tell, there's native villages on four, of, four or five of these islands. We can't tell you which ones because they keep moving. Just not this one. This is the closest thing to civilization here on this specific land pass. Presumably the natives have some way of navigating for themselves, but we haven't been able to nail that down whatsoever. Is it observable, the island's movement, or does it just happen? We're still looking at it, and they do seem to very slowly move to the point where it's maybe not perceptible to just stand there and do it. But if you're staring at the island long enough through a telescope, you'll see it move eventually. Or rather, notice the movement. Kind of like the hour hand on a clock. Mm. So you believe the missing dial to be on one of these other islands that are constantly moving, and there's, sorry, there's five of them? There's uh, seven islands total. Seven of them. And you said you've been to five different ones. 
there uh, it there are four or five villages on the other islands. Can't quite nail down where which one which village is where because like I said the islands keep moving and the natives don't seem to like us. Maybe you stop putting. Did you do place. something to uh, uh, antagonize them when you arrived? Kind of crosses his arms and listen. I'm not here to. I didn't invite you here to have my motives questioned. I'm not thing. We're not trying to question your motives. Our concern here is that from potentially these people's perspectives, you just appeared one day and perhaps you I can't speak for what you did when you arrived, but it might have been just as frightening for them as it was for you. And I've tried to be patient, but even the ones that we managed to get a hold of to sit still and talk to us for any degree of time aren't interested in cooperating. Believe me, I was he sent here to try and find people to trade with. And we only have aggressive savages to show for it. Yeah. Well. I think cooperation would go much better than opposition. I'm going to go see if I can talk to these natives. Perhaps a different perspective might help here. By all means. And off I'll go. Wonder, so are there right now, there's just the two maps of the two different configurations, correct? Of islands, yeah. Okay. And there's no indication, like, do the islands all have, like, a relatively similar shape? Like, are they all, like, oval-shaped or something? They're all roughly sort of... ...stubby ovals, like, they're maybe maybe like a little wider on one side than the other. Okay. But they're all roughly they're all roughly circular. Okay. I, I guess just actually to a point where it's like notable for islands that they'd all be shaped in roughly the same way. Yeah, because it's like you can't discern which one became or which one moved into the new position because it's like, well they all look like these wide eggy things right yeah okay it's strange how all these islands are so consistently shaped this isn't doesn't doesn't seem to be a naturally occurring thing or at least something i'm not used to from our realm i've heard tales from some of the other scouting groups of even stranger places so it's also very hard sailing between them because the abundance of sea life is occasionally problematic. Oh. As in... I suppose there are their names for the creatures you've been encountering? Uh, the long necks sea monster, the... Any legged sea monster, the. We're a scouting force. We're used to dealing with things that uh, don't appear back home. Well, Wander will look over at Nemi and kind of be like, I got nothing. All right, so we'll move on to Helios, perhaps? Yeah, sure. Oh, sure, okay. So Helios heads outside, 
beelining it over to those cages. Yep. All right. So you head on over, and uh, there are two humanoids bound up in the cages. Cages are about like six feet aside, roughly cubicle. Uh, levered up on the ground, so they're forced to lie the uh, holes that form the cage's bottom. Or otherwise sit and let their legs hang. One seems okay. to be a pale-haired, dark-skinned elf, maybe. Certainly has the pointed ears and that kind of, like, ethereal, delicate look to her. Okay. And the other is a human man, uh, both of a very dark skin tone. Both of them looking at you warily when you approach. Uh, I'll approach the elfin one first. Uh, and I'll switch to elvish when I speak. Mm -hmm. Uh Hi, my name is Helios. Who are you? And it shakes her head and then replies in common and is like, I recognize some of those words, but not huh. in that order. Huh. Okay. Uh, switch to common then. Um, so you can call me Helios. What do you go by? I'm not here to speak to your kind. I'm not of this group. Uh, my friends and I just came through that gate over there, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't know why they think imprisoning you will help their cause, but I find that it's better to be friendly uh, in recruiting help than not. I promise you, I have nothing against you. I would, in fact, like to see you out of these cages. I find that a bit disingenuous how they're treating you. You're not associated with these people, but you have the shiny shell weapons. Uh, yeah, we're we're a different group, my friends and I. Uh, we're trying to find our way to somewhere else but it uh we took the wrong way and uh now we have no way to get back where we were uh it appears that this place has a rather unusual setup i for one have never been to anywhere with moving islands and i was just wondering if perhaps you could help us and uh we would certainly appreciate your help uh locating the missing dial for that gate over there. Uh, I can promise you I will put in my best word for you with these other the people. They came from nowhere and attacked us. We don't want anything to do with these people, and we certainly don't want to help them find whatever thing they're looking for. Uh, that's totally fair. Uh, if you help us out, uh, we'll help you. And remember, we're not associated with them. We just came through the gate ourselves. If you want to help us, let us go. Or tell them to let us go. Uh, will you help us if we do? Perhaps that's not for me to say. All right. Uh, and I'll nod. I'll turn around and I'll go back to where everyone else is. Mm -hmm. And I'll uh, face the leader. Krios. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, so I talked with them and... They're not too pleased with being imprisoned. Uh, if you could let them go, um, we'll be all out of your hair. And if they help us, then we'll help you. 
Well, I don't imagine that they're too pleased with being imprisoned. That's the point of imprisoning them. Well, yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, the rising tide lifts all boats. If they help, if they can help us find the missing dial, then you'll be able to get out as well. And if, honestly, if our presence here bothers them, then us getting the dial gets them what they want. We leave. Mm-hmm. All right, come on. All right. And he heads out of the hut as if he's the kind of person who expects to be followed when he tells you to. <laughs> yeah, he seems like that kind of guy. Yep. Yeah. He heads over to the cage and is like, Are you sure you don't want to stay rest at least before I do this, or? Uh, I'm good at uh, healing on the go. Uh, the sooner we get out, the sooner you get out, everybody wins. Besides, why would releasing them... We can still rest here, can't we? The, these prisoners will go back home and hopefully initiate whatever negotiations they can on our behalf. You're asking me to trust them out of my sight. Out of all of our sights, and just hope that they act in good faith. One of the better ways to uh, get trust is to earn it. And if they vanish, we'll just be right back at square one, and we can all search together. If they vanish, we won't be at square one. I will have lost a valuable prisoner. They weren't going to help you anyway. Yet. No. You see, I thought that you were intending to leave with them. Or no. at least follow them. No, I asked them if they could help us find the missing dial. They were definitely not enamored of you. But if they help us, then, you know, everybody wins. No, so, no I, can't, I, then I can't agree with this. They're asking me to give up something on the promise of something valuable on the promise of help that might never appear. It'll be us giving you that help, not them. Oh, so you know where the dial is. No, they help us find the dial. We put yes. it in. And then you guys get out too. It's simple logic. Yes, but they're not going to help you if you just let them go. They're going to Why? turn around and what? Decide to help you out of the goodness of their hearts. Are, do good people not exist in your plane or something? Yeah, it's called compassion. I'd be more willing to help the people who have, you know, negotiated their freedom. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes, if only such people existed. Please sit over there. We'll feed you at least when we get rid of you. Mm-hmm. Gestures over to some logs next to a campfire. Did we get close enough when we were walking towards the cells? Did we get close enough to get a look at the cells at all that they're being held in? Or I guess, um, sorry, uh, Helios got a good look at the cages while she was over there, right? Yeah, Helios would have gotten a good look at the cages. And Helios is also a male character. Oh, sorry, yeah. yes. My apologies. Sorry, Helios. Okay. You got to go. Yeah, I got to. Yeah. Would I have spotted a way to uh, unlock and open them? Um, from the way that they're constructed, you didn't see anything, although they're just 
bamboo. They're probably pretty easy to burst open if you have um, weapons to do so. All right. Well, but in terms of like secretively unlocking them, no, probably not. Well, I have no objections to slicing that bamboo open. Well, but obviously, I don't say that out loud. Probably got our eyes on us right now. Maybe yeah. take offer of rest and go have a sit and chat away from this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Another cat boy eventually comes by and hands you uh, bowls of thick fish stew to enjoy. No, thank you. Yum. Thank you. I I I receive the thing I am offered, but basically just put it down. <laughs> no, like, yeah, so are we uh, are we mostly alone here? Uh, there are people around, but they're generally busy. Like I said, it's a military encampment. Right? Yeah, everybody has something. But we to do we could have a we could have a conversation without somebody standing there watching us, right? Uh, as long as you keep an eye out to make sure you're not being eavesdropped upon, that's definitely something that's a possibility. Okay. Sure. Well, uh, while we are enjoying our stew, uh, Nemia will definitely be observing who is around, and, uh, I quietly ask, uh, Helios, be like, so... What exactly did they say to you when you talked to them? Well, they're obviously not enamored of these cat people. Uh, they uh, said they'd consider helping us if we let them go. And uh, yeah, that's about it. They don't trust anybody. They thought we were with this group. So I I corrected their assumption. And I think if we show them some compassion, uh, they'll help us out. I have a good feeling about this. At the very least, it doesn't appear that holding them here, despite Prios's insistence, I think it's more of a liability if he keeps them here than an advantage. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't seem to see that. I'm a little leery of his overall motives. Um, Mal, please correct me if I'm mistaken here when I... But he mentioned something about that his realm maintains trade routes. So... That kind of stirred an old memory in me and it makes me more worried that perhaps this gate may have been sabotaged when the intentions of this group became clear. If they intend to maintain perhaps an ongoing contact, a supply line of sorts, hmm. the the people who inhabit this realm may not have taken kindly to that. No, probably not. I, uh, I can't say that I trust this guy at all. There's, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's just something about him that rubs me the wrong way. Agreed. I would say he is loyal, but he is loyal to the needs of his realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever he perceives those to be. Well, that's unfortunate for him, but we have we have places to go as well, Is and we aren't place... going to go anywhere. Sorry. Someone want my soup? Sure, split I'll it. take it. Let's split it. Sure. <laughs> it I'm is gonna very nice to have soup. Warforged, you can't it? eat. No point. It is very good soup, nice and spicy with nice big chunks of meat. Oh, I like it. Or fish. Fish Question meat. mark? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you have your little meal. So what's the plan from here? 
is it getting towards nightfall or something like that? Like, I, I guess, like, there's a couple of concerns. It's like here. mid-afternoon. Are you going to, like, just basically hang around and waste time until nightfall? Like, I guess my concern is, is, like, if we engineer a jailbreak, we're immediately not welcome in this camp anymore. <laughs> Unless we can somehow convince them it wasn't us. And the forest has basilisks in it. At least one. At least <laughs> one less, but potentially more. So mm -hmm. we, we mm -hmm. do need to be somewhat strategic about our decision to spring a jailbreak. At the very least, maybe we do need to go with them because we need oh, to yeah. find some relative safety. If we're, if we're busting them out, then we definitely are going to have to go with them. Which is, you know, but basically yeah. what Prios wanted, but screw him, apparently, so. Yeah. But <laughs> I think... I think... <laughs> If they see us acting in defiance of uh, Prios and his uh, group here in order to rescue them, they might be more inclined to, you know, uh, help us out and uh, take us in. Well, I guess at a certain point we're going to have to go on faith because... And if not, then we're just going to have to... Uh figure something out just the three of us which i'm sure will be fine yeah um, everything will be fine i i don't know if i'm glad or unhappy that none of you fell under the spell of ron's shirtless cat boy maybe okay. it, maybe if you had an image and we were actually had something to visually distract yeah. us but as of right now we're well, you know yeah well, you know, seeing as how that this is being broadcast on Twitch, like, you know normally how I run games, and I do like using images on that, but I don't want to yeah. take uncredited images and use them on a broadcast like this. No, that's fair, yeah. Fair. So, fair. maybe someday, maybe right. someday. You we'll know we have a weakness afford, for Catboys, so. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to afford, uh, afford I have a easy portraits, but, uh, <laughs> unfortunately... Not at this moment. <laughs> so, before the uh, great jailbreak, is there anything that you all are doing? You can take another short rest if you want to spend more of your hit yeah. dice I'm to gonna uh, use, heal up. I'm, I'm going to use my last yeah. hit die for, for, the, for the heals. At Helios as well? Um, yes, please. If possible, um, Flora would like to have... Uh, spend some time just taking a little walk around the camp to observe uh, numbers and uh, see what kind of uh, defenses they might have. Okay. Uh, so you take a little bit of a walk around. Let me see here. Let me give this a thing. You want me to roll something for this? Yeah, I'm thinking I might get you to do that. Uh, are you trying to be sneaky about it? Uh, sneaky? How much How much of an eye are they keeping on us? Probably pretty closely, yeah. right? Yeah, there's a lot of people like around, as well as there is definitely one of the uh, soldiers kind of like, not really following you, but... Staying in a position where he can keep eyes on you as you're wandering and, around. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely trying to be sneaky about it. Okay. So you'll give me a stealth check. You got it. 19. That's pretty good. Yeah. So at one point, just you managed to get far enough away that he just sort of, you can, your watcher is leaning up against one of the huts and just kind of casually watching you. That mm -hmm. when somebody walks by with a uh, log over one shoulder, <laughs> good old log. Uh, you can see over to one side they're starting starting to build a palisade around the camp. I see. Uh, that as soon as you know that line of sight is broken, you're able to duck out of the way, and so. You're able to uh, conduct your investigation somewhat surreptitiously. There's a, still always somebody around, just nobody watching you. Yeah. And so you're looking around, getting a feel for their numbers. You get the idea that there's maybe 20, maybe 30 of them if there's like 
if your count is just a little bit low and there are some of them out in the woods doing scouting stuff. Okay. Uh, which seems likely. And uh, they're all armed. And as you are looking around, uh, you quickly duck into one of the huts just to keep out of sight of your watcher as he comes by looking for you again. And as you're in one of the huts, it's set up with various hammocks and things to keep people off the ground as they sleep. And there are a few people sleeping that you manage to not disturb. But that's when you notice on stands at the very back of the hut the lacquered black armor Uh of the Mad Artificer's Doom Knights. Yeah. So... And I think that's where we're going to call our break. Oh, no, I have questions. <laughs> I have questions. But we're going to take a little break again. Oh, no. Yes. We're, <laughs> we're going to have our little uh, five minute break for people to refresh their drinks and use the washroom if you are a living being that needs the washroom. <laughs> I mean, sure, call it All right. to it. <laughs> I will be right back then. All right. All right. I'll be right back as well. All right. I'm going to stay here because I'm good. I'll, How's I'll, everybody I'll doing in the chat? <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody who is hanging out in chat. I hope you're enjoying our session so far. I hope the cliffhanger wasn't too awful. <laughs> well, it's a cliffhanger that'll be answered in about five minutes. Maybe. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, our plan is to do a jailbreak, so we may not get any resolution on this plot thread aside from they, they sus. Bye now. Okay, bye. <laughs> I know the mad artificer is some sort of like cross planar weapons dealer loading mm. out death knights or something. I don't know. I'm just picking random threads. <laughs> I see. Random speculation time. Go. <laughs> yes. Maybe Catboy was mad artificer Cat all along. Oh my god, he's actually the bad a, he's actually a, a cat boy all along. He's actually a pretty bishy under all that armor. Or yeah. cloak or whatever. Our secret weakness. <laughs> well, things seem a little more stable tech-wise, at least for... Or brief mode, or magic-wise, not tech-wise. <laughs> Magically. Sorry. Magically speaking, we're a little more stable, I think. Okay, I'm back at least. All right, I'm going to trade off with you then, Mal, and I'll be right back just to refresh my drink. One second. No worries. How dare you leave us in a cliffhanger? <laughs> Yeah, I was I I actually, I, I did want things to peter off before the break, so I'm That's actually kind of glad that you did take a peek around. <laughs> you didn't let yeah. me do this, uh, introduce the cliffhanger. Oh, you're welcome. I do love me a cliffhanger. You know me. Let's see. I'm just going to look at the uh, questions and things. I didn't see. wanted to see if the game was done here. Yes, we appreciate everybody watching, even if you're being quiet. Uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, yeah, you are all very awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We will be resuming in a few minutes as soon as. Uh, Stark, if you're still around, yes, you can absolutely hire Zerf. I highly recommend it. It's a little on the pricier side. Uh, they are for an artist, but I found it's well worth it, and they work blisteringly fast. Like, their turnaround time on a high-res landscape is... A uh, high-res landscape or a background is something in the neighborhood of a week and a half. And it's all incredible quality. Yeah. 
but like I I'm did really trying, great work on our background. Yeah, no, I'm still great. trying to uh, convince Zerf to uh, get prints done of some of their other artwork. <laughs> they can hang it up in the dungeon. Yeah, I recall you talking about. I think it's like a cityscape with like flying fish in it or something like that. Yeah, it's like a cityscape that's under, but it's underwater. Mm. Like kind of like rapture but modern and there's like tropical fish swimming around it's really cool oh wow uh how come you guys don't use roll 20 uh like uh i don't know who's signed into the main dungeon lounge account right now but that's me okay like elizabeth said uh we're just trying things out we're gonna try one of the uh Twitch extensions, I think, for next time. It's just that this week was a really stupid, crazy week for me, at least. So we weren't able to uh, try a lot of new stuff for the weekend session. But we do super appreciate the uh, channel raid. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, hopefully some of the people that came are enjoying what we've got going so far. Mm -hmm. But yes, I, I personally like Roll20 a lot, but uh, we also, as a group, prefer Theater of the Mind combat, so at least that aspect wouldn't be useful. I'm back. Theater of the Mind, well, it sounds so dramatic. <laughs> well, that's, that's the Theater of the that's Mind. The term. That's the term that's for true. it. And I, oh, that's the actual term. I, I don't know. I just was like, I don't know. Yeah, we you don't use like minis and tactical maps. It's theater of the mind. It's what yeah. it's what it's called. I really do want to get a mini yeah. though. Like I think I showed you, I made Wander, uh, like a rough cut of Wander in Hero Forge, and I would like it's kind of one of those things. It's like a, maybe a little present to myself or something. I might send that off to be um, made, and then I can. Um, one of my hobbies is to do mini mini painting. Um, I got my start specifically in Warhammer, but um, I've also started doing, I've done, um, a cohort of ours ran a Song of Ice and Fire campaign, and um, I got a mini done of um, my character from that Song of Ice and uh, Fire game, and uh, there was also an Exalted game that um, Mal ran uh, many, many, many years ago, and I got my Lunar Shapeshifter character from that game. Um, I've also got minis of her, both her human form and her... Uh, Beast, Deadly Beastman transformation is what it's called in Exalted because everything has very convoluted names <laughs> in that system. <laughs> like everything sounds like something that you'd hear like Sailor Moon say, say like Deadly Beastman transformation or something like that. Well, that's so, uh, very anime. Yeah, design. very anime. Yeah. 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 Or like uh, old Hong Kong martial art flicks where they're yelling out their martial arts moves or martial arts styles mm, yeah maybe i should put, put some photos on my twitter of the uh, the minis that i painted recently maybe yeah. maybe that's I a great that. idea that's uh, entirely up to you anyway so is, is everybody back from their breaks laura did you yeah, get you. a break in uh no but i don't need one i'm good all right the dragon i is, just know that you're totally recovering vital I, yes, I'm internally vigil. <laughs> All right. So, the Doom Knights. When the Mad Artificer came to Rochella, he not only brought with him the plague of clockwork zombies that we are all very aware of, but also he had his living follower, the Doom Knights. An order of warriors wearing full helms and entirely uh, obscuring armor. And all the steel was lacquered black. So that way they would seem in the dimly lit corridors of the Tower Kingdoms to be shadows attacking with gleaming steel. And up until this point, Mania, you thought that they only had to do with the Mad Artificer. 
that they were members of your own plane that for whatever reason, for gold, for the sheer, sheer sadistic pleasure of it, for revenge, for whatever reason, had decided to side with the Mad Artificer. And now, as you stand inside that hut, just feet from sleeping soldiers, you can see that that is not the entire story. As the black great helm of the uh, Doom Knights sit on top of an armor stand of that familiar black lacquer. The sets of armor are there. Five. Ah, and are there there are five guys sleeping in here? There are five sets of armor. There are yeah. three guys sleeping in there. There are three guys in here. Are there five um, bunks? Or, five bunks. Uh, do these guys look uh, the same as everyone else in camp, or do they stand out at all? Yep, they generally seem the same. Like they're all very heavily panned, and obviously nobody's wearing a set of plate mail in like the steaming jungle. At least not no. for long. But yeah, there are five humans and two of the uh, strange, odd-looking fat people. Okay. Um, she will very slowly back out of this tent, <laughs> <laughs> ensuring to not disturb any of them. And, uh, if she, if there's, if she hasn't, uh, mm -hmm. back oh, slowly out of the cabin oh, no. mm -hmm. and straight into the chest of the guy assigned to watch. Beep. Beep. And he's just looks down at you and asks, pardon me, but are you lost? Oh, uh, yes, I think I might be. I was, uh, I was just looking just for where points. my... <laughs> ah, not much for words, are you? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll just go and uh, rejoin my friends. Uh, you can watch me go if you want. I think so I will. she'll smile and uh, go over to uh, wherever we've been. I have we been given a tent to rest in. Or... Nope. You've been given literally a logs. couple of logs near one of oh, the Oh yeah, the logs. Right. Then I will go back over to the campfire <laughs> and uh, sit quietly uh, quietly down. Oh, hi. Uh, Namia, are you alright? You look <clears throat> like you saw a ghost. Did you see a ghost? Well, Are there ghosts here? Not... There could be, but that's... Uh, I need you to uh, not react in any way to what I'm going to tell you. So keep your faces and your voices the same, because we're definitely being watched. I figured as much, but yes. So I, uh, I took a little stroll around to, uh, get the lay of the land, so to speak, before we, uh, do anything hasty. And, uh, inside one of those tents where, uh, some of our uh, our gracious hosts are sleeping right now. Uh, there are five sets of Doom Knight armor, just uh, casually, casually there inside the tent. Well, that's fun. Which uh, brings up a whole new set of questions. So they might actually be our enemies. If we don't have uh, enough information to know anything. No, we don't. But certainly this, uh, I think, uh, lends uh, credence to our initial uh, suspicion and distrust of uh, Krios. You can only trust nature. People are kind of in the middle. You guys are good, though. Oh, uh, thanks, Wonder. You're good, too. I like you. <laughs> Gives you That's a little cool. pat on the metal arm. 
Ding, ding. <laughs> but we are... We're going to have to be extremely careful in this... Uh... Helios, do you think you'd be able to talk to the group discreetly before we take any further action? Perhaps confirm that when we do our best to help, that they have a means of getting us away quickly, away from what Nemia found? Uh, yeah, I can go talk to them again. Uh, I guess I'll just have to do my best sneaking over and keeping things hush-hush. There were guards at the actual cages. Uh-oh. Now, before, when you were speaking to them, like, it didn't really matter. They were like, okay, I guess you were supposed to be here and you're not discussing busting them out of yeah. prison. <laughs> mm. You were encouraging but cooperation, there, yeah. But there are guards in earshot. Hmm. Well, might have to put them to sleep or something. That... Which would require one of you. That Before would I can... be very, very risky if anyone notices that two guards have just fallen asleep. Yeah. We, we well, may just have to act on faith. I mean, if we do it at like two or three in the morning. They are keeping a close eye on us. So right now, we may just be forced to wait until there are less eyes around. What is it? Smash and grab? Yeah. Uh, if I just go talk to them, nothing else. I mean, I don't know how trigger happy these guards are, but... Yeah, I guess it's whatever we want to risk. Or we could just go on faith and hope that they're feeling nice and charitable today when we release them. Well, they're not going to be charitable. It's whether it's whether or not the prisoners are going to. Uh... How obvious is it? Is it, if I cast magic. magic? Uh, what spell? Detect magic. Detect magic isn't very obvious whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, that might. As, uh, that one is, for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If ma if you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around the source of it. And learn its school of magic, if applicable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, maybe that'll be give us a good, give us more information. All right. So you uh, cast Detect Magic. There are verbal and somatic components, so you are visibly casting magic, but once it's on, you have it for the 10 minutes without having to do anything else unusual. Yep. Um, okay. Anyone asked, I, I did a healing spell. Sounds good. Um, okay, so you do learn by just casually keeping an eye out for the 10 minutes and watching people as they go by. There are at least two magic users in the camp, uh, one each of a human and one of the shifters. Mm -hmm. The cat boys? Or cat boys or cat girls? Kitties. Kitties. Sure. Kitties. The uh, kitty magic user appears to be a cat girl. Hmm. Although obviously not a cute, adorable one, but one that's a little more suited to the harsh realities. 
Um, if applicable, they I also get their school of magic when I notice them. For these two, you just pick up the, on the fact that they're magic users. Okay. Uh, you also detect the magic of uh, several magic items in the direction of Brios's tent. Which, shock and surprise, he's got access to fun things. And when he's actually out and about doing his job, you definitely notice that the is back, which appears to be made out of some uh, heavily lacquered red wood with silver furnishings, is definitely magic. Sorry, is this something that's on him? Yeah. This is something he's carrying around. You also identify that he also is a magic user. Mm, fun. So yeah, I kind of just give little, like, try not to be too obvious about it, but then like, magic user, magic user, Rios too. And lots of... In terms of, like, enchantments laid out, there isn't anything like that. Okay, well, this is going to be a challenge, <laughs> but I think we can do it. Oh, yeah. He, like, gives you guys a thumbs up. Like, we just got to believe in ourselves. <laughs> I don't like that well, laugh coming from the DM. Mm. Well, your plan isn't necessarily terrible. Great plan. Yeah, Everything yeah. will go fine. So, uh, yeah, um, I guess our we're... options are basically we don't have access to a boat, so swimming across to another island is a not great option. So we either have to take one of their boats or, yeah. That they said that they were still building boats. Yeah. It's fine. We'll just um, we'll just run off into the uh, we'll run off into the jungle, and hopefully the prisoners will trust us enough to take us to one of their villages. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Hopefully, we should buy enough goodwill by releasing them. Okay. So, what exactly is the plan? Wait till uh, dark. Mm hmm. And uh, I think uh, one of us is going to have to sneak over there and break open the cage. Uh, mm -hmm. Possibly, whoever. Which one of us is the sneakiest? And uh, make a run for it. Uh, now, when I was scouting out around, is there a... Uh, could I see a... I don't know, a good escape route? Oh, yeah. You beeline it into the jungle, you're probably in the clear. It's not too hard to run away. It's still a camp that they're building. And they don't have set up any checkpoints or anything yet. Remember, according to Brios, they've only been here a month. Yeah. So they had like a couple weeks of probably kind of waiting around. And it's only just recently that they were like, okay, we better get dug in for the duration. Uh, Wander, I'm going to. I guess you're not super sneaky. No. <laughs> I'm pretty no. sneaky. Uh, I'm also pretty sneaky. So perhaps uh, one of us gets one cage and the other yeah, gets if the Sasha other and cage. I go to the cages. Wander, how do you feel about maybe being a distraction? 
Or do we want a distraction? How will I distract them? Yeah. So they don't kill us? That's... I understand the, the function of the distraction. I am puzzled about how. Uh, well, perhaps you could go and say you want to talk to, uh, talk to Prios, and then they could, uh, while they're all watching you go over to his tent, we, uh, sneak over there and break them out. Now, I'm just One putting this really out uncomfortable, there. but at least it's uncomfortable to robot didn't. could be. <laughs> I'm just putting this out there in case I didn't describe the encampment as fully as I was imagining. But literally everything here that isn't a piece of armor or a weapon is constructed out of rope, canvas, dried leaves, or wood. Wander, oh, you got a set of fire. Uh, okay. You have a spell for fire. That does not target nature. It cart targets creatures. I do not intentionally harm to aim na aim to harm nature. However, no, but you there is I think I know where Mal's going with this. I do have access to the Druidcraft cantrip, which I can create a lot of Things and sounds and stuff. Things and sounds and stuff. Yep. Sounds like a good plan to me. Yep. Yeah, so you be you make a some kind of fire based distraction. I and I, while I, they're getting all I can't start <laughs> fires with this though. Okay. Yes, well you can. it does not include oh. that in its abilities. It says I can snuff them out, but I cannot start them. Yes, it does. We do the description. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Light so you can light out. them. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I have to specifically have oh. candles. Don't contradict me. I am the Dark Lord now. I know everything there is about magic. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Fine. I'll go start a lot of little fires. <laughs> <laughs> You start Wander the fire fires, starter, apparently. And then, and then we'll break them out, and start. then we'll uh, we'll meet out in the jungle. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Great plan, everyone. Yes. I don't like. I don't like. Absolutely how I'm nothing this plan. can go wrong. <laughs> don't say that. Best best plan ever. You'll be fine. I have full confidence in us. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go start fires. That's not a sentence I expected to say today. We got to wait till it's nighttime. Okay, sorry. You pass time until night falls. And then <laughs> as the whatever third shift that these guys have going on is just getting kind of a little bored and most everybody else is asleep, you make good with your plan of setting fire to a bunch of shit and then busting these people out. Yes. The first thing I yes. do, though, just to kind of clear, like, to kind of keep the guards off me as I start getting up and about is um, I can also create sounds. They're they, like harmless sounds, but just like make it sound like a lot of nature has suddenly become interested in the camp on the fringes and things like that, just en enough to kind of get their attention. So when I start moving, nobody is mm. particularly like, oh, whatever, or not oh, whatever, but like they're more distracted by the, the chittering they hear in the bushes over there. And then, yeah, start going around and just little fires here and there, hopefully. We'll see how dry their camp is, I guess. Can I get a, can I get a stealth test out of uh... Helios and Nemia, please. Absolutely. If you please. Yes, but. I'm happy. 20. I don't have to roll one. Ooh. Not, and then not I 20? got a 22. 
Yeah, I rolled a nat 20. And my Yay. overall is 22. Thanks. That's nice. pretty good. Pretty good. Teen. Nice. Okay, so you expertly creep your way through the camp over to the uh, over to the cages. Why and wait for the distraction? And Wander goes and sets a bunch of fires and keeps the guards distracted. So while the guards are worried about basilisks or something, you set a couple little fires, which very quickly get out of control. Oops. Oh. One of the huts just goes straight up, and soon there are a bunch of tents on fire, and then while nobody's quite panicking, there was people charging around yelling for water getting shovelfuls of dirt and heading in the direction of the flames. And soon enough, the guards on the bamboo cages are drawn away into helping fight fires, giving Helios and Nebia the opportunity they need to start sawing away at some of the uh, ties connecting the various bars of the cages together. Yep. And soon enough, the two prisoners are free. You pull a couple of the bamboo poles out of their sockets, and they're able to slip out of the bars and run into the jungle. All right. Um, once I've sufficiently done distractions, I am going to activate Wild Shape to take the form of... Um, I'm going to I, I, unfortunately, I don't have much knowledge of the flora and fauna of this area, so I'm going to have to stick with an animal I'm aware of, but uh, something small like a cat or something like that, just to kind of like, oh, Warforged here, only kitty, bye, whoosh. Wander, maximize. Yes. Transform and roll out. Maximize. <laughs> <laughs> So you shape shift into a cat and dash away. Why? Uh, meanwhile, I'm guessing Nemia and Helios just follow after the people that they've saved. Yeah, yeah. I'll have a, a narrow knocked just in case, and go carefully. Mm. Uh, so you do catch up to the two of them just as there are having a brief, very hush argument outside, like, a good hundred paces or so outside of the uh, encampment. And eventually, the uh, woman of the two sees you two and waves you over and points down towards the beach and says, okay. come, come. Oh, follow he along. trying to follow. Yep. Yay. Uh, it takes you a little bit because your pace is a little bit slower than theirs. But uh, once you find their, they're not trying to hide their trail. They're just trying to get away as quickly as possible. So once Wander finds their trail, it's very easy to follow it all the way down. Anyway, they take you to the beach where... The uh, man starts yanking aside a whole bunch of fallen palm fronds, eventually revealing a small catamaran that he is Secret hidden boat. among the trees. Secret boat! Yeah. Wonder you're going to have to stay a cat. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck at, like, a, yeah, as long as I'm in wild shape, I can't, as far as I recall, I can't say I can't interact mm -hmm. in my my known languages anymore. So yeah, it's just the language of meow. Meow. <laughs> when the guy wades out just enough to hold the boat in place while the woman gets aboard. Mm 
Yep. You'll take us with you, right? Get in. Don't be a fool. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Scoop up the cat. Yep. <laughs> He's I'm just, the Nemi is heavy just heavy cat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nemi is just going to assume that this cat, really heavy cat, is uh, Wander. <laughs> You've seen Wander shapeshift before. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure we've seen it before. <laughs> it's not a surprise. All right, so you get into get the, the uh, get into the catamaran, and you can see the woman at the front, like looking out into the water before taking up a rope and whirling a lasso above her head until she launches it out into the water where it catches something and the boat is suddenly yanked forward. Wow. Oh. Does this have something to do with the, the way the islands move? Yeah. Nebby is asking this out loud. Oh, you're asking it out loud? Yeah. No, we catch, uh... We catch, uh... The sea serpents as they go by, and then use the rudder to, uh, maneuver ourselves in their wake. Pretty, uh, it's very ingenious. It's better than a sail in some ways. So they yeah. skip out across the water. If we, uh, looking back at the island, is there any sign that anyone from the camp is chasing us? No, but you can see the uh, light of the fire off in the <laughs> deep in the trees. Great. I'm oddly proud of myself. <laughs> Look at it go. Whoosh. Yay. Anyway, the uh, man at the rudder expertly steers the craft around as you go shooting off between the islands at a very rapid pace until eventually they the woman tugs the rope free and he steers you in to uh, slide onto the beach near one of the other islands where The woman then jumps off of, jumps out of the boat and holds it in place so you guys can disembark and wade to shore. Get um, onto the shore and put the very heavy cat down on the beach. Resume water shape. <laughs> Back to Warforged. Uh, that was a lot more fire than I was expecting, Wander. Great job. Yeah, I, excellent job. It was very dry. Clearly. What a nice smell, though. I've always loved the smell of, of burning wood. Wander seems a little perplexed at that statement. But okay. But it's a nice smell. I hope people are relatively okay. Yeah. Regardless, well, so far. The people who we liberated, what are they doing? Uh, kind of giving me curious looks. The uh, man has pulled the boat the catamaran ashore and the woman's just kind of like considering you guys very carefully what are your names my name is wander i believe you have met helios already and this is nemia 
I am Miami, and this is Tosh. We are new to your realm, if Helios has not mentioned. We came through the gate. We are finding someone who's done a great many bad things and has slain our traveling party. We're hoping to find him. But we don't think he's here, so we'd like to move on, but it appears the gate is not functional from this side. I'm sorry, the gate. I'm sorry, did they say anything after the gate? Yeah, what is a gate? What there does that is, word mean? Uh, she, Wander kind of maps it out with there with uh, her hand like draws like an like an arch and then like this the device on uh, top and then the, like kind of like the two circles inside of it mm -hmm. yeah bone curved shape yes I, I we know we know that thing in one of the the discs that's usually in it uh i don't suppose you would know or any of your people would know how we could find it so we could move on. Perhaps uh, one of the perhaps the king or one of his wives. But there are many things about you that are unfamiliar to us. You are unfamiliar to us as well. We mean no harm. As I said, we are simply put lost. Well, tell the person we are, we will take you to our king, and perhaps he will be wise enough to help you find your missing whatever you need to to activate the gate. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Oh, um, before we, we keep going, I do have a question. Um, when uh, the others, uh, when they arrived here uh, about a month ago or whenever, were they all wearing a he heavy black uh, armor, like the, the shell armor, you call it? Some of them, yes, were wearing it to battle. We weren't to wear them in a way. They attacked us, raided one of our villages about uh, three weeks ago. But they, uh, the shells that they wear seem to exhaust them. Oh. They appear very heavy. They are. How long yes, have that you been armor. active? Three weeks. Sorry, two weeks, you said? Three weeks. Wow. They fed and water us, and they weren't cruel, but they didn't let us go. Seemed that they he had no intention of ever letting you go. Yeah, I'd say that's a safe bet. He believed in eventual compliance. We kept speaking of things of ransom and things of that nature and we know what a ransom is but we're not sure what gold and silver are when he meant when he wanted wealth and riches i told him that our money is calorie shells and he seemed to be very angry at that for some reason.
Well, you probably shouldn't keep standing around here, but will you take us to your village? Yes, of course, right this way. Are there a lot of basilisks on that island we just came from? Like, this is, sorry, discussion while we're walking. Every island. Oh. There are a few on every island. They're not terrible. Wander makes a, Wander makes the approximation <laughs> of a grumpy face. <laughs> grumpy robot <laughs> face. Not terrible. <laughs> I'll show you not terrible. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Just There we go. Had to do a thingy here. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, he's making notes. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> now I'm in the mod interface spanning. Yeah. I'm... The person who's offering to let us buy followers. Thank you. I was oh, the, the bot. Yes. Yeah. But thank you. Oh, so long, bot. Goodbye. See ya, bot. See you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. All so, right. So, the forest or the beach. We're walking. Yeah, they lead you along the beach. And as they turn the curve of the island, you can see built onto uh, just beyond the beach, in, where part of the jungle has been cleared, there is a village made up of. A collection of small huts and probably, you know, a few hundred, maybe a thousand people living here. Wow. And so much for savages. <laughs> the, oh, that's kind of uh, rude to call them your, that. Your escorts end up getting challenged by people who are just sort of keeping an eye on the perimeter with uh, torches, and you can see that they're carrying spears made of some sort of pale stone-like blade on top of a long pole. And... Uh, Maevi explains, no, these are outlanders, but they rescued us, and they'd like to speak to the king. And so the sentries let you pass, and you go wander through the darkened village, following your two escorts until you get up to a building that's It's a stretch to call it a palace, but it's definitely bigger than a lot of the other buildings around. And, uh, that's where Maevi turns you over to a pair of the guards and says, please, these people are outlanders, explains the whole situation. And the guards give you a brief once over and they're like, very well, wait here and we will speak with the king and we will see what he has to say. Thank you. Thank you very and much. I think that's where we are going to have to call it for this evening. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Okay, yes. should we go through your notes well, too quickly? Uh, it's that. Also, with everything going on, I wasn't able to prepare as much as I wanted. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Oh, okay. okay. 
Um, Bit of a You definitely didn't question. end up hanging around with Brios as much as I expected you, but that's okay. <laughs> We're sorry, sorry we were immediately we too suspicious sus. of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cat yeah, boy, if, if, if you, you're like hot cat boy. That's suspicious. Super sus. <laughs> cat but, boy. But uh, that, that's fine. <laughs> it's just the way that our narrative worked out, and uh, because I don't, I know how different I am when I go off the cuff versus when I prepare, and I'd rather be prepared for doing our broadcast and gameplay. Okay. That's all right. Uh, so, uh, so, how was how, game? I was going to say, first, can we find out how much experience we got? Or, I don't know if I get experience. Oh, yes. I die. Yeah, you, oh, yeah, do we get experience? Oh, we for... still got experience. You got 234 Yay. experience each. That's okay. 234. All right, let me just quickly calculate that up. Yay. And then you can each have another 50 for discovering the armor of the Doom Knights. Another 50? Yes. Okay. So in total, we should have 1485 experience right now. Uh, is that correct? Uh, that uh, seems correct. I had 1201 going into this session, the 284, and then the 50 you just mentioned. I just want to check to make sure. Delicious, Sorry. delicious yes. XP. Yes, that, that yes. sounds about right. Great. Yeah. Uh, so did you say what, do we, what do we need to get to level four? 2700. 2700. Okay, so it's going to be a little while. <laughs> right? did you I, say... forgot, I forgot how long it takes to get levels in D&D. Two eighty four wow, wow. or two thirty four. Uh, two thirty four from the basilisk, okay. and then another fifty for discovering the clues that you discovered. Okay, thank you. Using not a problem. Trying to figure out if there's a way to note here because I'm assuming I want to note that my wild shapes expended until my next long rest. Well, you will have a chance to long rest before you need to use it again. Okay, fair enough. I can guarantee you that. Okie dokie. Thank you. Okay. I want to make sure I'm following this stuff all properly. Proper accounting. It's important. Yes. Yes. You know how oh, much I'm, of a I'm glad you are you're... for accounting all this stuff. I'm mm -hmm. glad I have players that I can uh, count on to do these sorts of things. <laughs> so Happy to help. Uh, Elizabeth, how did you feel about session? Oh, I thought it was interesting. Um, I was... I'm not expecting to see it tie back to the Mar Mad Artificer so quickly, but I am kind of glad that we're kind of seeing, like, maybe getting a better inkling of, like, how the operations work. Like, I mean, I know it's not something we can kind of, like, know in character yet, but I'm kind of getting the impression that maybe, like, the, the Artificer either loans out troops or he's been hiring troops from somewhere, which could indicate maybe, like, there's, like you know, outside of the artificer, maybe there's some other larger thing to consider that could be yeah. problematic. Yeah. Like, you know, if there's like, you know, Doom Knight Inc. for hire, just send however many gold pieces this way. Here you go. Have some suits of armor. Yeah. I feel like uh, it's probably a situation maybe where he, you know, he's got, he's got his Doom, his Doom fingers in a lot of pies. So it's <laughs> like. <laughs> that sounds really they, weird. They said they were, yeah, but <laughs> I, what I meant is it's like he said, they said they were trying to establish a supply line. So yeah, maybe it's yeah. like, you know, having a lot of uh, evil pies going on at once, you know, you need a lot of supplies to keep that kind of operation yeah, going, even if you are, that's you know, a bad me. evil artificer. That, that worries me a bit because like it, the idea is like, we want to leave, so we need the gate functional again. But are we making things like are we creating an opening here for them to get their supply line? Like, do we have to yeah. like do some sort of like finaglery to basically you know basically break the lock behind us as we're going or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Because if they're if they're any way aligned with the mad artificer, like he, I presumably he knew where he was going when he manip manipulated the gate the first time. I doubt he just picked a random place to go. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And we and 
we also are like, once we do get back to the gate, like, where do we go? All right. Somewhere else? So, uh, what about uh, Sasha? What are your insights for the session? Anything that you want to share? Uh, well, I was a big fan of the jailbreak. I quite love mm -hmm. doing stuff, exciting stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry it was a little truncated, but I didn't want to have a situation where somebody like fails to knock out a guard and all of a sudden we're stuck in combat yeah, for another what, eternity. What like, cause my big fear, like, with that kind of combat would be like, here's twenty guys, three spellcasters, <laughs> yeah, and three of us. Presumably, over time, yeah. five of five of the troops are going to become doom knights, which and we struggled five, against one. <laughs> at least five. You don't know if you discovered yeah. all. I only of found, room. yeah, I yeah, only yeah. found one tent full of armor. There could have been more. That's very true. That's yeah. why I asked them. When uh, we you, got to the you beach. know that like even with all three of you, one doom knight isn't a pushover. At least not at the level that you're at. Correct. Yeah. I, I look yeah. forward to the day where you guys figure out that yes, you're finally at the power level where you can mow down doom knights like they were just regular mooks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll someday. be great. Yes, someday. And right someday. now we're like someday. basilisk. Someday. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, right now a basilisk yeah. almost. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, okay, so the there. funny thing about the Basilisk is that the Basilisk just kept getting exactly your uh, AC to hit mm -hmm. and exactly your saving throws not to be affected by things. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, literally dead on the target numbers that the Basilisk needed to do these things. Another thing is that I think um, your assumptions about basilisks were a factor because you guys kept saying, oh, I, I avert my gaze. I don't want to risk the basilisk gaze where the basilisk gaze is um, a constitution saving throw of DC 12, which like at the very least Wander could have nailed easily, right? Did I? Yeah, with your. I think wisdom. With your is, constitution. I think my wisdom is actually my best. Let me check. Yes, but your constitution is also very high, isn't it? Um, uh, let me double check that. Uh, it's plus four. Wisdom is plus. Six. Yeah, so you only you only need to roll an eight to pass, and even if you failed, it takes two turns. Maybe. Of having the gaze on you to. Fully turning into stone. Oh. Uh, another thing is um, you had disadvantage, um, Sasha, when Helios was trying to stab the basilisk while he's keeping his eyes from meeting its gaze. A hundred percent, you could have used your seeking arrow to just hit it. Like, fired an arrow up in the air and then. Let magic I didn't take even over. think of that. Yeah, well, it's something to keep in mind if it comes up again, if you're in a situ similar situation where you have to hit somebody with an arrow that you can't see. Mm -hmm. As long as you know where they are, even if you can't see them directly, you can hit them with the seeking arrow. That's true, and I'm yeah. I'm telling you this not because I want to put you down or make you feel bad, but because I know that uh, you struggle a little bit sometimes with the tactical combat and the and things, and I wanted to make sure that you understood that was an option. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I will definitely keep that in mind for later on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the Basilisk fight, <laughs> like, I knew you guys could do it. Like, I looked at the Basilisk stats, and even though it's technically you're supposed to have another third level character to fight the Basilisk, oh, okay. Uh, and have it be a normal difficulty fight. Like, I knew the three of you had it in you to kill the Basilisk. And if nothing else, I, I just... I had Prios there to, like, jump in and kill the Basilisk if you needed to save your asses, but I really didn't want to do that to you. Because you legitimately... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I knew you could do that. Like if nothing else, the grasping arrow is a really powerful ability for just dealing a ton of damage. And then you have the great combo with dissonance whispers. 
We didn't even plan uh, that. Yeah, I know you didn't plan that, but hey, it works, right? Yeah. yeah. If I think the plane one of lands, the, uh, strengths of D and D is that I think it's v built to be very. The classes are built to complement each other, regardless of which ones you pick. Like <laughs> unless you pick ones with significant. I don't say overlap, but like. I think even then, maybe like there's probably still. Anyways, sorry, rambling. <laughs> no, it's fine. We have lots of time, right? Fair enough. Fair I enough. mean, we're we're. I I don't think I'm not gonna nail you everybody to the floor and keep you here until eleven. But we have that long. I mean, good luck nailing uh, us to the floor when most of us can, you know, probably turn into giant dragons or griffins and be like goodbye. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> you, you. you go ahead and try, Mal. I want to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know not to push my luck. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> but no, I, I thought for what it was, it was very good. I sort of set up what I wanted to set up. And there's still some mysteries. I didn't play all my cards right away. Uh, I am a little nervous about portraying the uh, Native Society. I definitely don't want it to be uh, misconstrued in any way or accidentally hurt somebody's feelings or offend anyone. Um, but uh, well, hopefully that'll go well. And certainly I'm doing it from a respectful point of view. Oh, yeah. I'm just I, uh, I know borrowing you. some themes that fit in with the trauma. You you put in a lot of work and a lot of respect into what you do. I'm not afraid of any disrespect happening. But I'm... I'm not also not for you to say. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully it'll do well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody from the chat like to chime in with stuff that they liked about the session or uh questions that you had for any of us on the Dungeon Lounge team? Yeah, basically, yeah, we're I guess we're kind of in a pseudo Q and A. Type of period. Yeah, we're, 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 we're hanging, out. hanging out, cool yeah. down, hanging out, hanging out, cool down, chatting. Our post game virtual McDonald's hangout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Waffle House. Yeah, yes. Waffle House. Mm. Is it Waffle House that they go to in the games? I'm not entirely sure. I don't actually. remember. It's been so long since I've seen the gamers. Yeah. Hmm. Like, I watched the gamers' Hand of Fate not long ago. I think when I was sick, maybe? Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. Like I said, I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys uh, grow strong enough to uh, take on the Doom Knights as if they were just regular ass books. And uh, I love also... becoming overpowered in a game. Oh, oh that's I a am... good movie. A basic going. movie is the Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, that's a good Oh, yeah, one. that's a good yeah, call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the Emperor's New Groove. Such a um, good movie. Right, What's okay. the other one? 10 Things I Hate About You is a Yes. Movie. That's, that's my big oh man, I haven't seen that movie in like a long time. Yeah. Now, if you told me that the cat boy looked like Heath Ledger, we'd be having a different conversation about trust <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's also a great movie. <laughs> oh, Rachel actually, Dorado, yeah. also good. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So, I've actually Why seen both? Both? Both. Dorado. Oh, you should. Actually, funny enough, my favorite sick movie is Airplane. Or I guess it's oh, Airplane. Oh, I love that. Because oh, it's got an, ex yeah, it's got an exclamation point on the end, doesn't it? Which yeah, I know, yes. I guess it does, I don't want to say it dates me because I mean, whenever I tell someone that I like that movie, they're like, oh, you're, you look so young. That you, how did you figure out about that movie? And I'm like, well, Mama Banshee and Papa Banshee were like, here you go. Entertain <laughs> yourself. Here's a movie. <laughs> so like my, uh, like my sort of Banshee mental... My sort of mental image for what Krios looks like is like Taylor Lautner, but a cat boy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so instead of a werewolf, I... it's a cat wolf, a were cat. Yeah, cat it's, a cat, it's a cat boy. <laughs> instead of being a werewolf, he's an evil ranger who uh, leads a scouting unit for. And apparently has magic. Yes. Okay. Well, well, rangers have magic. 
Oh. The next time we play, I'm just going to envision envision him as Taylor Lautner with like <laughs> Halloween store cat ears on. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's not attractive enough to me to be d- distracting and staying for conversation. He's, I mean, he's not ugly, certainly, but. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then again, I never really bought into Twilight, so. Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just talking about the uh, actor, right? Oh, I know. The actor is okay. Did he ever do anything after Twilight, or did like Twilight kill his career? I'm like, I mean, just just trying to think. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, can't I can't think of any. It's fine. I'm sure there probably were movies, but probably. Who are we talking? We're talking about the uh, <laughs> the actor that played <laughs> Jacob in the Twilight movie. <laughs> wow. But, but Where did this conversation a Appa- Apparently he's been in a bunch what? of stuff. I just don't recognize any of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in vi- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a because good that was, he was Shark Boy. Oh my god. He was yeah, he was in Shark Boy, Boy and Lava Girl. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, apparently, he is uh, Mal's uh, face actor for Evil Catman. Rio. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, now I'm like envisioning at some point, like, oh, we're going to have to like, make a I, I have shot. here. Oh, no. I, I have here in my notes, specifically from Flora. Specifically. See? Uh, let me just get it out so I can get get the wording right. Oh no! <laughs> get me the word. <laughs> okay, lay it on me. Long running cute boy villain that can eventually be redeemed. Oh. Oh yeah, I do remember saying that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Something that Flora has always wanted to do in an RPG. And so I'm oh, yeah. just going to throw a whole bunch of cute boys at you until yeah, okay. one of them sticks, and then you can <laughs> redeem your cute boy. Oh, okay, apparently Acorns didn't hear my, my wish entirely, so you're going to have to repeat that. <laughs> oh, long-running cute boy villain that can eventually be redeemed. <laughs> okay, but... Here. Sasha wants to destroy a, an MLM scheme. And Elizabeth wants a working. moment of, and Elizabeth wants a moment of temporary unlimited power. We have very different priorities. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy Avon. Unlimited oh, help power. <laughs> Actually, no. It's Sensi. I want to destroy. Oh no. Um, Screw you. I just hate MLM. Okay, but I don't. It doesn't have to be the first cute boy villain that no, we're just, just going to give I'm you a parade throw, of them, right? To choose from? I'm going to throw them at you until you're so sick of fucking <laughs> part, pardon my language. What? You're so sick of uh, you're so sick of cute evil people that you're just going to be so done with me. <laughs> at some point I feel like it's going to be a it. like It's like where it's like why are all? Why is evil just so damn attractive? All of them, just one after the other. All these beautiful men. <laughs> yeah, it's why literally the mad, so the mad artificer like... is the only one that's like this old man with like a <laughs> fake leg, and all the other ones are all handsome boys, like straight out of a clamp manga. And... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Like, just constantly raining uh, sakura petals and feathers everywhere. See, the problem is if you put too many cute boys together, eventually we may just be like, well, now I want Prios to hook up with tragic <laughs> other, tragic dog boy over here. And oh, we'll you know, have to, we'll just start shipping we'll, things. We'll cross that ship when we come to it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've, you have you have you have DM for us before. You have seen us ship things. We will we will ship the crap out of this if you give us the opportunity. Yeah, yeah you know, I know. You, we've created a lot of navies in our vast uh, <laughs> the armada of ships. I'm, yeah. I'm looking for a lot of armadas going. 
I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Ship the crap out of everyone. Let the Go BL on, lo 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 launch your navy. Yeah, BL, boy love. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, sweet Sasha. <laughs> For your Speaking ears. Of Sasha. Oh. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun so far. Yeah, I'm quite looking Enjoy forward it. to seeing where this goes. Yeah, I had a great time. Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm so, already uh, quite invested. Oh no, I had that deal. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh no, we're sorry. <laughs> Welcome My to apologies, the Marcus. Sorry. I'm Apparently, I am an innocent flower. <laughs> I'm happy to have enriched your lives with video. <laughs> are are you are you sure? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. So I'm not sorry in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like you. You are a little. <laughs> uh, so. Everybody in out there in the chat and in the Twitch verse, we hope that you join us tomorrow afternoon at what time? Three to five. Three to five. Uh, Easter. Eastern daylight time for uh, uh, Inquisitor Marvin with Sasha. Yes, I uh, I've decided to switch things up. I'm gonna try to alternate between games uh, and and uh streams so i'm going to start a new game tomorrow of a game called inquisitor martyr which is based in the warhammer 40,000 universe and i look forward to sharing it with you all because i find that game to be an immense stress relief and it's just fun to mow enemies down by the horde or the emperor <laughs> or the emperor Mowing enemies down in a constant unending stream sounds like Warhammer 40k to me. Yep, yep, and I don't need to worry about rolling dice or anything. And then uh, we all take Monday off, and then on Tuesday I'm going to make a second attempt at my solo debut, <laughs> and hopefully it'll go a lot better this time. Believe but, in um, you, Mal. Yeah. Uh, uh, I really, I have an ambition to become well known as a Magic the Gathering playing VTuber. So hopefully I will be successful. Support you in Excellent. this endeavor. Yes. Ah, thank you. Well, that, well that, that's what the Dungeon Lounge is all about. We all support each other and teach each other about boy love. <laughs> My Jeez, innocence you, I already has knew been what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder why, Elizabeth. <laughs> I make it a point <laughs> to be knowledgeable. Oh, <laughs> you make it a point to be knowledgeable. Huh? <laughs> I see. You studying it in great detail? I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's call it here fun. at just short of ten o'clock. So, right. yeah, about three hours. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. a respectable right. length. Thank you, everybody who came to watch, and we hope you'll enjoy us in a week's time for another session of the Dungeon Lounge Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which needs a better name at some point. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. You'll come up with something. Thank you, maybe everybody, for coming. Yep, yeah, thank maybe. For, thank you for joining yeah. us. Anyway, yes. Hopefully you join yeah. us for one of our other st solo streams next week, or join us on Saturday. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everyone. <laughs> yeah, thank we really so appreciate much, it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, can, we'll be continuing our death <laughs> counter for those amongst you who were <laughs> keeping track of how many times I died. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Acorns. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Marcus. Marcus, yeah. eighty-five. Thank and you. Thank you, Stark. <laughs>
That's uh that's Flora's death count from Dark Souls. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's but my current count. Uh, I'll have Darkest to decide whether I want to do it by by session or just overall. Why not both? Uh, maybe yeah. both. We'll see. Let me know. Um, that way yeah. you can see if you're getting better or if you're getting worse. Oh no. Are any of our uh, <laughs> other friends still streaming for us to oh, raid? Yeah. Is there someone or is there someone we can raid into? I don't know how to leave the mod interface. <laughs> it's Aww. such a boomer. I'm looking around and I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> well, I can oh, hang out sorry, with you, Stark. Stark. <laughs> yeah. I don't... <laughs> I'm going to be if... sad, don't go. Aw, oh, Stark. Oh, I'm sorry. If you want, oh. I can come back on and game a bit. I don't mind... Playing uh, gargoyles with yeah, jokes yeah. on you, there were no bell gargoyles. <laughs> I like the bell gargoyles quite a bit, actually. Yeah, apparently, the mod either removed them or put them somewhere else. I'm sure they, I'm sure they're there, but maybe they in a might room be, that... they might be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'll find out. I'll find out. Uh, uh, well, I'll find I'm, out definitely, I'm definitely going to watch because I still want. I want to know the elite, elite strategies for dealing with the Capra demon. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well. Oh yes, that's a, that's another thing. Uh, yeah. Since this is going to be a little racy, uh, do we have your permission to have uh, art made for your uh, stream for the Dark, Dark Souls and Dragons? Um, Thumbnail image to be like you wearing very little and doing the praiseless. Yeah, I, you mean my helmet and just my my pants. Yes. Yeah, your helmet. Or the your helmet those skirts and... with the one boot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, Go for it. We, we just didn't want to have a super racy. Uh, um. We'll only get by you with your permission. For you. I can't oh. put on a shirt. I don't have enough endurance. <laughs> 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 or I haven't found a shirt that's light enough yet. All of my shirts weigh me down. I won't fat roll. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> oh, uh, Meme Love is streaming near Replicant if you want to oh, okay. raid that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. All right. Sorry, uh, are we raiding somebody? Yeah. Now we're gonna we're gonna give them a raid. All right. Yeah. Thank I... you again, everybody. Yeah, for thank the you. So much. Thank you again for joining us. Yes, you're you all. I'm sorry, Stark. <laughs> <laughs> well, on Wednesday you could try again. Here we go. Let's go. All Let's right. go. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Love you all.